I'm so happy to be here tonight. It's good to see friends that I've never met before, but we've been friends for a while. And we will be. Listen, we're going to have we're going to have billions and billions and billions of years to get to know each other. Amen. And we'll be like, I don't know, 96 billion years from now. We'll be like, y'all remember that time we got together that cat, Pastor Alan Dio? Y'all remember that dude? And we'll be a whole lot like that. And uh, they, oh, he's look, he made it. He's here. That surprises me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, I love Pastor Allen, and uh, I love him, and I love his family so much. I'm actually before I before I get, to, guys, we're gonna go out. We're gonna go, we are gonna go on a wild journey tonight, and I actually have like ten different sermons to try and preach over the next 45 minutes, and I. Yeah, so I'm just going to I'm just going to do the best that I can uh, because I'm super passionate about the things that we're going to talk about tonight, especially end time things. And then we're going to get off into the, how the heavens declare the glory of God, and we're going to talk about some of the role that the heavens play, um, and at the return of Jesus, and some things that's going to be happening in the heavens this year, and how it is it's prophetic, and that it all glorifies King Jesus. And so, if you're like mm, my my little cringe meter is starting to get pegged a little bit right there. Well, we will address those things. And I know that people do trashy and silly and irresponsible things that are forbidden by King Jesus whenever they start to look at the heavens. But I don't. Amen. I love me some Jesus. And the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. And day in the day utter speech, night in the night, it reveals knowledge. And there is no language where their voice is not heard. Amen. And so I'm going to be talking about that kind of cool stuff here tonight. But guys, I want to welcome this house. And I am so daggum excited do y'all say dead gum out here in North? Okay, praise God. Man, I was in Phoenix a few weeks ago and got in bad trouble for saying dead gum. And like got a, got a spanking from the pastor there and said, hey, man, we don't say that around here. I'm like, nee, nee, what I want to say. But I didn't because I'm a pastor and I'm not allowed to do those kinds of things. So nothing but good behavior from old Troy Brewer. I promise you that. Guys, I want to welcome you here tonight. Say thank you for driving in from wherever it was that you drove in from. And uh, I bless you guys, everybody that's watching online, all my friends that are watching on ODX TV tonight. Man, I love you guys. I told you I was going to put it on. I told you. See, I didn't lie. It's on. Hallelujah. Everybody say it's on. Just say it. It's on, man. Um, I, I do have to tell you that uh, this year has been, um, it's been as crazy a year for me as it has been for you the past couple of years. Y'all just know that it's just the new standard craziness that happens. And in rescuing kids, yeah, some, some of you may already know, you might not know at all, and it's okay. You don't have to know anything about me. But we, uh, we rescue kids out of sexual slavery. And we've been doing that for more than 30 years now. We've rescued more than 10,000 kids now. And we're seeing uh, porno rings shut down. We're seeing death threats, demons showing up at our houses and our church, witchcraft. All kinds of fun stuff going on. We're just like, to hell with you, devil. Amen. We're not going to back down. Man, we, I'll tell you what, we know Jesus. I don't even know if Tom Petty knew Jesus, but man, he sang the words. Amen. And I'm like, come on, man. Like, no, you know what? If the body of Jesus doesn't stand up, who in the world is going to, especially in these last days? We all say, oh, man, you know what? If I would have lived in the South uh, 150 years ago, I would have stood against, I, I'm telling you, I would have stood against slavery. I say stand against it today. That's what I say. There's more slaves alive right now than there's ever been in the history of the planet Earth. And it's mostly children, and their crime is they're poor. That's their crime, and that shouldn't be a crime. And the body of Jesus, you know what? People should be able to depend upon the men in the body of Christ to not be addicted to porno. Amen. Everybody, like, men are like, there goes my cringe meter right there, baby. Now, listen, man, I'm going to tell you, I, I talk about it. Every time I talk and just say this, do not partner with that devil. I know what pornography does, and I see the other end of it all the time. And if you think that you're watching pornography and that it doesn't hurt anybody, I want to tell you, if you're watching pornography, you are watching a crime scene. And I know what I'm talking about. And I've been doing this a long daggum time, and I'm telling you, listen, come out from among them in Jesus name get some dudes around you that walk with God and say dude I struggle with this I struggle with that and nobody you know get with people that you can be real with and if you can't be real around the people you hang out with give those people the left foot of fellowship yeah. just say dude there's seven billion people on the planet I ain't got time for you anymore let's go amen um, a few weeks ago pastor Allen came to our neck of the woods and um, 
him and his beautiful family. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Pastor Allen and his bride, they don't, they don't travel without their kids. They take their kids with them everywhere. And I, I can't tell you how much I love that. Um, I did the same thing with my kids. My kids are all now in their 30s. And I got a set of twins that are 29. They're fixing to be 30. And I got a boy that's 32. And then I got a daughter that's 36. And I was four when she was born. I just want to... <laughs> let me start out young in Johnson County. But... <laughs> With that said, um, yeah, you know, and they all have, we took them all over the world on all of our missions trips. When we rescued kids, we took our kids with us whenever it was safe or relatively safe to do so. And uh, we built our orphanages with our kids there, taking our kids there. And now they have their special places that are their places that they go. And now they're taking their kids. And it's just so beautiful. I was, uh, we just built a brand new rescue center on the northern part. And y'all don't worry, I'm not going to take up an offering. I'm just sharing stuff with you. you okay? Is everybody all right? But I was like, if you fix and take up an offering, no, I'm not going to take up an offering. So um, we, we built a, a rescue center, a brand new one on the northern border of Mexico. The borders are open. It's a big mess. I'm not going to go off into that. But tell you, it's bad. And um, we had, this house had seven rescue kids in it. When we got it, we have more than 100 now. And we're doing a bunch of reconstruction down there. And we, I took Pastor Allen. I, pa I asked Pastor Allen and his family. I said, you guys want to hop on a plane and fly down there? You want to? We'll just cross the border and we'll go over there. You guys want to You guys want to meet people that just a few months ago were literal slaves? Literal slaves. I mean, owned by another human being. And we either rescued them by stealing them or we rescued them by buying them. Which is the only way. That's the only thing that you can do for slaves. You can either steal them and move them away or you can buy them. And so I'm like, you, wanna, you guys want to meet some kids? And you guys might know. Um, and they said, yeah, we'll go. They didn't hesitate. And they brought their whole family. We went on a plane down there. We went to the border. We crossed the border, had my team come and get us. And we went across there. And one of the main girls that I couldn't wait for them to meet was this beautiful girl named Martha. I want to show you a picture. Guys, this is her the day that we rescued her. And she's 12. She's, that's a 12-year-old little girl. Okay? I'm going to take that picture down. And I'm fixing to show you guys a video, and you guys are going to see Martha now. And uh, she's 13 now. Last year is when we rescued her, and we have a whole house full of these kids that we've rescued. And we went across the border. Did y'all want to see what it looked like when Pastor Allen went over there with me? I want to show you this. You guys are going to love this. All right, guys, hit it. You guys see that? So this is our place right here, right? Yeah. Do you guys see that big, beautiful house over there? Yeah. That's a cartel house. Wow. That's so close. Yeah. That's, that is like ground zero for what we're sending kids out of. That's how close that is to us. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm so glad they're still here. I'm there. I haven't been here on the, during the week. We always come on Saturdays, and that's never an issue. I'm looking forward to seeing some of these kids that I love so much. I'm looking forward to these guys being able to actually see this for the first time, just being able to share this. It's a really, really, really big deal. And it's a big dream come true. It's just awesome. We're liable to see a couple of miracles. We're gonna pray over everybody. I just mostly just looking forward to playing with these kids and just hugging them. And I think about them so much, and then to see them is a big deal. All right. This is our people working Wow. Hey man. What's going on, brother? How are you, man? It's good. Wow, that looks so good. It does. Hey, man. Hola, senor. I'm so happy to see you. Hello. Listen, we've done work all over the world, but the work that Troy Brewer is doing, that the Open Door Experience is putting together for these people south of the border is unreal, and it's worth supporting. This is the hands and feet of Jesus at work, and it's really an honor to be here and to see it firsthand. Hey, guys. You know Martha? Martha. Here she comes. You know she Martha? Is. Martha, yes. That's Martha today. You look Martha so good. a couple good. weeks ago. How are you, my brother? Ah, she looks so good. Woo! God, how old is Martha? Uh, I think I think she's 13. 13? Yeah. My daughter Alana is 13. Yeah. Come over here. Come on up. Hello, Come this over is here. my daughter, Martha <laughs> Alana. <laughs> Outstanding. Isn't she just the prettiest thing ever? Yeah, yeah. She's just so daggum pretty. Yeah. Martha, I tell everybody about you. Yeah. 
I do, everybody. And I pray for you all the time. Yeah, how are you? Yeah. Look out. Look out. Look out. That was amazing. That was absolutely incredible. Guys, are you guys happy to see Martha? Thank you. I'm just going to go so ahead. Good. This I, that's so first good. time I've seen this. So I'm so proud. Anyway, um, I'm giving that, I'll give you that film and all this kind of stuff. I just knew that Martha was on it at the beginning. And man, in, isn't she gorgeous? Yeah, isn't she just gorgeous? I'm showing that to you to just encourage you because it, it, it's life to me, man. I just can't even tell you. All of our kids in Uganda, we have, I, I, I could talk to you a whole lot more about that. But the bottom line is, man, I want to see transformation in this day. And I will not let the world shut me down or demoralize me or freak me out or tell me to shut up or cancel me. And I want to try and spread some of that here tonight. And it's not because I'm meaner or bigger than smarter than you. I'm not any of those things, but oh, I'm stubborn. I got a Holy Ghost kind of stubbornness on me. And I want to I wanna give that to some of y'all and just tell you this, that you are world changers. And this is a very important day to be alive. Guys, the world needs you in this day to be a drop-dead, sold-out Jesus freak that is highly activated for the Lord. People that are not caught up in the same spirit as the rest of the world is caught up in, but madly in love with the Lord, full of the Holy Ghost. People who know that they know that they know that Jesus is coming back soon, and man, we got to get something done. I ain't got time to fool around with, you know, yesterday I got banned from Twitter yesterday. And, and I want to tell you, listen, sexual trafficking is the most censored thing on the internet. And you guys look that up. More than any other thing that is banned on the worldwide waste of time, is anything about sexual trafficking. Go and look it up. You guys, you guys do your own web search on that, and you'll find that more than anything else that's banned, and the thing that raises more flags than anything else is if you mention sexual trafficking. It's a lot like the mafia. We don't want to talk about it. Well, I'll talk about it. And I say to hell with the devil. I'll talk about it all day long and tell you that Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, is coming back soon. And I'm going to be his friend, and I'm going to walk with him, and I am loyal to the king, and I'm loyal to the kingdom. And you know what? Children should have an advocate in the body of King Jesus. Our relationship with children should look a lot more like heaven than it looks like hell. Amen. Well, friends, when I'm talking about the end times, I got a little bit fired up and because Jesus is coming back soon. And guys, we are the end time church. And you say, well, I'm not really sure of all that. And frankly, Pastor Troy, I don't want to learn about the end times because it's just too scary to contemplate. Well, can I just throw this out there to you and say this to you? You don't have that luxury because you are the end time church. And you can walk around blissfully ignorant or you can be a bad part of what King Jesus is doing today. And you can go, I will not be defeated by this daggum world. Do you know what I thought of the first? Yes. And I want to tell you, I didn't say anything bad on Twitter. I just mentioned something about sexual trafficking. I mentioned something about transgender. I mentioned something about that. And just went, hey, wherever the transgender agenda is, there's transhumanism that follows that. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow because that is a huge part of the end time deception. We're going to talk about why, that, that, why that's important and why that's relevant and why we need to understand that. And I'm going to throw that at you tomorrow morning. Y'all probably never invite me back again. But the first thing that happened yesterday, as soon as I got banned from Twitter, you know what I thought? I thought, well, praise Jesus, I don't have to look into that cesspool again today. I have been officially banned. I did everything I could do to reach people for Jesus in that. And if they want to kick me out, I promise you I will have a party without them. I promise you. And it requires a different kind of spirit today. And if you have any place within you that thinks, I have the option I have, if you think that you have any kind of option within you to not be in the fight and to be in the fight that you should be in right before the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you're deceived. It's a lot like, you know, man, I've been, I've been married for 34 years and my wife, my bride is smitten with me. If she was sitting out there right now, she'd be like going, oh my God, that man. I, no, that's not true. In my mind, it is. In my mind, she melts. 
But I can, and she would, if she was here, she'd say, I do. And that would be her being very polite. But we really do love each other. And it's like, well, how come, how come, Tori, you know, man, you, you, you travel the world, you, you've done a work in 56 nations, you know, you, you, you pastor a church, you do the thing. And how come you guys have never had uh, problems? I'm like, well, I don't have any option to have problems. I mean, if you have an option, you're going to have problems. But if you don't have an option, then you're not going to have any problems. Just remove the option. It's like, well, I'm a boy, so I need to have my options open. That's stupidity is what that is. Like, I don't have the option. I signed up for this right here. Right on. And besides that, my wife is fine. I don't know if y'all seen her, but she's drop dead gorgeous. Like, <laughs> she's so good looking. Well, Paul wrote... And knowing this at the time that is now high time to wake out of our sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than we ever first believed. And that's Romans 13, 11. It's like, look, let me tell you what it means. If you're going to believe, one of the things that people, one of the things I get accused of, because as soon as I start talking about the rapture of the church, I start getting all kinds of, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Like, well, then you be out. Amen. And you go through the tribulation if you want to go through the tribulation. Enjoy it. I bless that in Jesus' name. Listen, we need godly people in the tribulation to spread the gospel. Sick them. But as for me, I'm out. Gone. Long gone. Well, as soon as you say, what happens is people that don't agree with me on that, they're like, okay, I don't agree with that. So here's the deal, Pickle. We can't be friends. I'm going to be hostile. I'm going to be super ugly to you. You're going to get a big stack of hate mail. And uh, I hang on to all my hate mail. I really do. And it's not because I respect it. It's because if I ever run out of toilet paper again, I want to have some. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes those kinds of crises happen. And, man, you've got to be able to have something around. And so I'm just like, well, here's what's real is. Again, if you think you have the option to not truly understand this, um, you're not thinking right. Because if you think you have the option, you're going to understand a whole bunch of things that do not matter. And that's something, men, that I really fight for and I pray for. And I say, King Jesus, sir, I just, more than anything, God, I want to be in the fight. But please help me, God, that I'm not fighting for things that do not matter. I don't want to spend my wills in things that are not matter. I mean, like, look, I don't know how much is left in your timeline, whether the Lord comes back or not. But I want to tell you what it is. It's short. Even if you live to be 90 years old. I talked to my 90-year-old grandmother. She just passed away recently. And right before she died, uh, I asked her, I said, Nana, what's it like, you know, to be 92 years old? I said, tell me about that. I'm like, what would you tell me? And she said, Troy, I just, I was just now starting to figure things out. (laughs) And I'm like, Nana, I so believe that. I truly do. I truly, truly, truly do. Guys, we have very short Time frames. I'm going to talk a lot about time tomorrow. We're going to talk about timelines whenever I'm talking about the DNA thing and and end time deceptions and all those kinds of things. But I can just tell you that if you knew your time was short, and some of you are a lot older than you think you are. (laughs) Amen. Some of you are a lot younger than you think you are. All right. Some of you are like, man, I'm on way out. You still got another 25 years. Just deal with it. Amen. And then some of you are like, man, I'm going to live to be so old. You don't know that. You don't know how many days that the Lord has given you. Amen. So I would say this. There's an urgency where you got to wake up. And if you don't have a sense of urgency right now, I want to tell you, get your head out of the lap of media Delilah. And do not be deceived by that. And now that everything is turning AI, I'm just telling you, you don't want to be plugged into that. There is a bad demonic spirit that is in that mess. And if, and if you don't have a huge sense of urgency, man, to win people for Jesus, man, do so. That's what I love Pastor Allen so much for. You know what? I mean, you, really, you guys went out and knocked on a thousand doors. In this hostile generation that we live in today, man, that's brave, dude. That's brave. I didn't knock on no thousand doors last week. Uh, I didn't do that at all. I kicked down a couple, but that's... <laughs> But I wasn't out knocking on anybody's doors last week. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you the reason for your hope that is within you with meekness and with fear. You ought to be so full of hope that it gets on everybody's nerves. And if your hope is not challenging people, and if your hope is not provoking people to ask you, "What, what is it with you, man? Why are you so daggum happy all the time? Why are you so hopeful? 
If you're not doing that, I want to tell you, you're not doing your job in these last days. And the church has been terrible at being hope purveyors and hope catalysts. The body of Jesus has been terrible. And I'm not, you know, I'm talking about me too. All of us have. I've been a pastor for 26, uh, seven years. I don't remember. And I, I, want to, I want to just tell you this, man. We have been terrible. And listen, guys, we got to get good at, at dishing out hope. We need to learn the language of hope. We need to learn how to cooperate with the Spirit of God concerning hope because people are losing hope today and we're all just shrugging our shoulders. Oh man, not me. Not me, not me. Listen, this is what I have to offer everybody. Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's what I have. The Bible says that when you begin to see these things that happen, all the things that we're seeing today, it doesn't say quick vote that marijuana is legalized. It doesn't say hurry, take as much Prozac as you possibly can. That's not what it says. It says look up and be watchful because your redemption drones here. Like what's going to happen on your watch? How's your watch going? What's happened on your watch? What is happening on your watch? And how serious do you take your watch? Your watch has to do with the assignments that God Almighty has given you. And if you're not looking up, if you're not like, I'm looking unto Jesus, I'm living, a, I'm living a prophetic kingdom lifestyle, I'm full of the Holy Spirit, and I am full of hope. All of those things have to do with looking up, right? And these last days, man, if you don't develop that skill set, and if you don't have some supernatural sanity and some supernatural emotional intelligence, and if you don't have real self-awareness that comes from the power of the Holy Ghost, I want to tell you, the devil will tell you how you feel. And you'll go, okay. You might feel like a girl today. You might feel like a boy tomorrow. You might feel like killing somebody. You might feel like this. You might feel like ending it all, whatever. And the devil will be happy to tell you how you feel if you do not take on the responsibility of your whole emotional awareness and say, I'm serving God emotionally. If I'm sitting around sad and I've been like, man, you know what, dude? I am, I am, I don't like my life anymore. Whoa, 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 stop, 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 man. Serve the Lord in your emotions. Serve him and say, man, you know what? God deserves to have a servant and to have a friend and to have a child that is happy and motivated. And you know what? The Lord God Almighty paid a huge price, man, for me to, for, um, for me to do that. So I think I will conform my life to the image of God's plan. The second thing I'd like to say that if you say, I don't, I don't want to learn about the end times because it's just too scary to contemplate, I want to remind you that you are a warrior that plays a tremendous part in all of this. And I want to just tell you, man, it's like what I said to so many of my friends during COVID. I went to, I got, I got invited to, um, I got invited to a ministerial alliance. And uh, after, you know, I don't know, COVID had been going on for about a year and a half. And, and there was a lot. Anyway, I got invited and I'm so naive. I thought they were, I thought I was there to receive an award. It's like, what is that? Those are jackass ears growing out of the top of my head. <laughs> and I went there, well, yeah, you know what? I can see these guys going, hey, man, we're so happy that there's somebody in Johnson County that gave away, you know, 8 million pounds of food to 200,000 people in a county of 120,000. That's pretty, pretty good for one year. Man, we're so proud of somebody that, that put together a church and stayed open and, and man, we saw more than 4,000 salvations uh, within, within six months. And man, we're so daggum happy, man, that you guys are rescuing kids all over the world. You can't even travel and you figured out a way to do that. Because I want to tell you guys, uh, guys, while it was bad and while nobody was able to travel for the first time since we've been doing this, all these children that are in brothels that we followed, they were all under the same roof and we could get them. We never had them under the same roof before. We never imagined a scenario where all these children were under, would ever be under the same roof. And you can't go in and rescue half of them because they'll murder the other ones. And so there are some kids, guys, that we've been literally watching for years that we've wanted to rescue. And we just go, man, we, they all got to be under the same roof, man. How in the world could that possibly happen? Oh, we, found, we saw it happen. Guys, we rescued thousands of kids. Crazy. And so I thought... Man, and this was making like national news because we're not that big of a church, you know? We're not, you know, we're not like a 30,000 member church. And so I'm like, okay, so, man, awesome. So I thought, well, these guys are gonna invite me in and and sit and and invite me to, yeah, I don't know. I thought, and what they said was, 
is they got a whole they, I went in there and I said, this one pastor stood up and it's the local ministerial alliance. And he said, if I have one more participant of my church ask me, why don't we do things like what Troy Brewer's church is doing things? He goes, I'm just going to pull my hair out. And I'm tired of people asking me that. And I told him, I said, I think your church is tired of limp wristed leadership. And I think that they're tired of having leadership that will not do anything. And you're not motivated in a day. And you're like, I got to play it safe. I got to play it safe. I'm like, dude, if you think gathering is, da- is too dangerous, you won't last two seconds in the, in the cartel world. And it's like, you're worried about being infected by somebody else. I don't guess you'll come to one of my 13 leprosy villages. Because I spent months and months of my life with people with leprosy, so much so that as I'm getting old, I'm 56 now, I'm about to be 57, I'm getting old. And I'll be, I'll be, I'm, I, play, I play guitar, and I'll be jamming, and I'll be playing my guitar, and like my Lego go numb or something, and I go, oh, no. <laughs> Hoping it's not leprosy, you know, because I'm around that all the time. Then I'm like, no, it's not leprosy, I'm just old. I mean, like, that's a real thing for me. And it's like, I, I listen, we're, we're not on the same page. That's what I tell him. I said, I promise you, we're not on the same page. I tell him, I said, man, I didn't know that your church belonged to you. I thought it belonged to the Lord Jesus Christ. Why, why are you not serving him during this time? Because we're scared. We call you a ambulance. I was like, I ain't scared. And I'm sick and tired of people that are scared. This is a day that we're not supposed to be afraid, dude. We're supposed to be full of hope. But we're supposed to be looking up. And I don't know what exactly your calling is. I don't know exactly what, what, what you're called to be activated to do. But it's something. Yeah, I've been mad and mad and mad at churches for the past 30 years because they, because they wouldn't do anything outside of the four walls of the church. Now they won't even do anything inside the four walls of the church. Too scared. It's like, well, it was illegal. It wasn't in Texas. There was no reason for us to shut down in Texas. We had a six-week period where we could only have 10 people inside the church. So we had a, we had a service with 4,000 people of it at the hospital parking lot. Like, move it to the hospital parking lot. And then we'll do a great big giant barbecue, and we'll feed every single doctor and nurse inside that place. The kingdom of heaven is here. Let's do something. Amen. And we did, and it was crazy cool, and it was fun. And... I needed to do a bunch of renovation in my building anyway, so I didn't mind doing church out in the parking lot for six weeks. Guys, I want to just tell you, you can't be afraid of the day that we're living in. And friends, we got to encourage each other in that in these last days. How am I doing? Okay, well, you'll be very happy to learn I'm not preaching on any of that tonight. I am. (laughs) I'm actually preaching on something altogether different. And I am going to shotgun blast a whole bunch of stuff to you guys, and it's going to be a lot. I'm going to be talking to you about how the heavens declare the glory of God. I'm going to pull up a scripture on my phone as I look at my beautiful bride. Oh, she's so pretty. (laughs) It cracks me up how pretty she is. I'm glad I got her when she was young before she met anybody else. I'll tell you about end time prophecy. I was horrified. and I'm talking about horrified. When I started, because I got saved when I was 19, and then I met my bride, and I was scared to death. Jesus, Jesus was going to come back before my, before my wedding night. <laughs> Anybody remember those days? Like, oh, God, please, Terry. Oh, God. <laughs> Young Christian men worry about those kinds of things. The idea, though, that you're going to get ripped off whenever Jesus comes back is very immature because I promise you, you will not be ripped off. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the sounding of the trumpet, friends, every priority you've ever had will change. Boom! And you'll be like, all that stuff that mattered, man, it don't matter now. It mattered then, but it don't matter now, and it's never, ever, ever going to matter again. Man, your priorities will change in a moment. I'm talking like, boom! You'll just be like, Jesus. Amen. Well, friends, I, uh, when I was a kid, my daddy would come get me, and he would take me to the Noble Planetarium in big-time Fort Worth, Texas, and it was my time where I got to spend time with my daddy. I loved my daddy uh, growing up. I didn't live with him, but my dad was a very good man, and he was a good daddy to me. And he would come get me sometimes, and we'd typically go to the planetarium, and we'd do that. Or uh, he would let me play in his band. He was a professional musician, and... Uh, 
just a, just a genuinely good man. And then whenever I got saved, Daddy gave his heart to King Jesus. When I got saved, my grandfather, who also helped, helped raise me, gave his heart to King Jesus. And my, my whole family, I baptized my brothers, I baptized my sisters, I baptized, I mean, my whole family. When I first got saved, I didn't know anybody that was saved. I didn't know one single person that was saved when I got saved. And I quit all my bands, and I joined a Christian rock band that was called Destiny, and this was during the 80s, and we all had big hair, and I had boots up to here and hair down the hair. I was very conflicted. <laughs> and joined this Christian rock band and took off, and I got saved on a Friday, and the next, the next Friday I was at Oral Roberts University playing in front of 3,000 students going, I just got saved last week. I've been in full-time ministry ever since. Amen. And just God just put me in, like, let's go. Let's go. But I want to tell you, as soon as I got in and I began to look at the Word of God and begin to learn the Word of God, one of the things that I first began to notice was the numbers that was all the way through the Scriptures. And you guys know I'm kind of a numbers guy. And uh, I didn't know it was taboo because I wasn't churched. I didn't know you weren't allowed to do that. Right? I mean, I, honestly, I didn't know. And I was just like, oh, okay, well, you know, there's 153 fish. I think I should look up 153 all the way through the word of God. And, oh, lo and behold, it means sons of God. In fact, the word sons of God actually, ha actually has the, the gematria or the numerical value in Hebrew that says the sons of God. And there was 153 fish in that. And you know what? I think I'll look at Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, and I will count every single person that Jesus leads into the kingdom. And boom, there's 153 with the thief on the cross. I know he led a whole lot more than that, but the Bible records 153 different instances. And I'm like, dude, this thing's math mathematically perfect. Well, that made perfect sense with what I'm talking to you about here tonight because I've been uh, looking at constellations since I was a little boy, and I figured out when I was a real little kid that if I learned things in sequence, I could learn anything. You know, you know I, I could learn anything if I learned it in sequence. It's part of how my weirdo Rain Man brain kind of works, right? It's like, okay, okay, okay. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, right? Right? Go, I can do 50 of those. Like, and I can do it in less than 20 seconds. And then I'm like, okay, how many presidents are there? Boom, let me name them. Oh, and let me start off with Texas. And what is right above Texas? Well... Oklahoma is there. Okay, what's right to the right of that? Arkansas is, right? Okay, what's right above um, Oklahoma? Well, Kansas is. What's above that? South Dakota, what's above that? North Dakota. And the reason why I'm telling you that is because I begin to learn the constellations like that. If I can find Orion, and in the wintertime, anybody can find Orion. Most people look at Orion and go, look, y'all, it's the Big Dipper. <laughs> That's what most people do. And nope, it's not the Big Dipper. That's actually Orion. It's a wintertime constellation. I knew that right next to Orion, right next to that, is this incredible, this inc uh, another incredible galactic picture, and it's Taurus the Bull. And then I was like, okay, we're out, what's right on the other side of, of Orion? Oh, my gosh, it's that big. It's the brightest star in all the heavens. It's Cirrus, the dog star. And you know what? That's the big dog. And look, man, you can see his back. You can see his legs. That's where his head is. Yada, yada, yada. And before long, I could map out. All the heavens. And I want to just tell you, if that sounds impossible to you, it's not. If you, if you have the ability to learn all 50 states and figure out where they're at, and I promise you, you could do that. Like, it, it might take you a while, but you could learn that. And if you can learn that, guys, there's only 88 constellations in, in the heavens. And you, can, you can, and you can only see about half of those here. So on, on a dark, so really all you got to learn is probably 25 or 30 constellations, and everybody will think you're a genius. <laughs> Girls are impressed with that, too. I was like, dude, I'm learning this, right? Well, whenever I got saved, what I began to find is this. I know all these stories of all these pictures in the heavens, and I was like, these stories are also in the Bible. I was like, what the heck is that? Like, whoa, 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 I know exactly how this story is going to go because I already know what the story is in the heavens. And then sure as shooting, it would turn out the way that it is in the heavens. And then I began to see, and then I began to study, and I began to look, and I got me a, strong, a Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. And it's like, why does God tell us to follow the bear and her cubs, which is the Big Dipper, which points to Polaris? I'll tell you what, I want to show you guys a picture of Polaris. Let's just go ahead. You guys ready to start doing this? So it's like, okay, so this is Polaris. Polaris is the 50th brightest stars in, um, star within the heavens, and, and it's not very impressive. 
If we were outside right now, and if I was facing north, I'd be, I'd be like, okay, if I'm, if I'm facing, say, west, I'd be like, it's right there. Because at this part of longitude, it's, it's always right there if you're facing west, right? And here's the deal. It doesn't move because it's stationed directly over what is our north pole. So that means everything circles it. Polaris represents the throne of God because everything circles it. And it's the 50th brightest star. And like, what is that? It's jubilee. If you can find Jesus, he will set you free. And what is the job of the Big Dipper? To point to Polaris. Who is the Big Dipper? The seven churches. It's seven stars. And what's the job of the church? To point to everybody to the kingdom of King Jesus. The throne of King Jesus. That everything circles and says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is yet to come. Amen. Are y'all still here? Because I got a lot of this tonight. Okay, it's like, okay, and I begin to see that, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, it is the throne of King Jesus, because if you, if you can find the North Star, you're never lost again. Right? It's like, that's Jesus. And then I'm like, okay, that means all these constellations that are pointing to Polaris has to do with the church, or it has to do with the message of the Word of God, or it has, and then lo and behold, whenever I get to looking off into those things, you can see it. And it's like, what? And like, yes. And it's like, okay. So Polaris, every single star that is within the heavens, friends, every single one of them is named, and all the names are ancient Hebrew and Arabic names or Greek names. So it's either written in ancient Arabic or in Hebrew or in Greek. Same as your Bible. Your Bible is like that. And what you'll find is the Bible is as the heavens because the author is the same. The author is the same. And if the scriptures do testify of King Jesus, and they do, I'm telling you this. This is all to God's glory. All of this is. So every single one of the stars, like, like, like I told you guys, there's 88 constellations that are actually mapped out that God Almighty placed within our firmament, which means our field of vision. Our, he, he put these stars there understanding what they would look like to us. I was like, why would he do that? Man, he does that all the time. He places things in your firmament. There are things that make sense to you that do not make sense to the person next to you. Can I tell you this? Orion only looks like Orion to our solar system. It doesn't look like that to any other solar system. Because they're in a different place looking at it from a different angle. Amen. You have a different firmament. And, and one of the things that, that you're going to have to grow up in and have huge... I, I teach all the time, friends, on, on emotional... Awareness and this. I spent a big part of my life thinking I was lonely. Like, I can't share this with anybody. And I, we, my, my bride and I took on this burden of kids all over the world. And, you know, we found out we could literally buy human beings. And my wife and I, my, my beautiful bride has never been mad at me for being so crazy. She's as crazy as I am. And we mortgaged our house, went into Sudan, and bought 60 Christians in Sudan. In Sudan, and then walk them across the border into Uganda and set them free. And we mortgaged our house to do stuff like that. And then we came back, and everybody was mad at us over it. We came back, why would you go there and do anything when there's all these people over here that need help? Well, just because you can't walk and chew bubble gum doesn't mean I'm not doing anything over here. I'm building food banks all over this dadgum state and all over this dadgum nation. And I got a food bank down in Nicaragua that feeds 100,000 people a month. And I like, why are you mad at me for doing something in Sudan? Like, what is that all about? People, I know you can't trust old Pastor Troy to be here on Sundays because sometimes you got to run off to Africa or Mexico or some of them fellas down there in the Amazon. <laughs> like, yep. Yep, I'm not here to serve you. I'm here to serve King Jesus. And I'll, I'll help you and I'll love you. But listen, I'm not going to be your rock star. I'm going to be the child of God. That's who I'm going to be. And I'm, 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 I'm on it. I'm on it like, like a duck on a June bug, man. I'm on it. And you're not going to stop me from doing this. Well, I got to looking at all these heavens and got to looking at it all. And I also discovered that every single one of them has so many light years away. And you can just do a Google search and find out. And there's a number attached to it. I also found out that when it comes to the ancient Arabic Hebrew or Greek names, which is exactly as your Bible is written. You can, the Bible says that God named all those stars. 
The Bible says in three different verses that God names the stars, that God numbers the stars and God Almighty names the stars. So what you find is whenever you find a constellation in the heavens, like let's just say Orion. I don't know, Hunter, if you have a picture of Orion. Yeah, you got one up there? You're a stud, man. Orion. There you go. Cool. So look, if I had my cool star pointer, I'd be like, all right, kids, this right here star's name is Seraph, and it means the foot that crushes. This star right here's name is Betelgeuse, if you can believe that or not. Everybody say Betelgeuse. I have people all the time, you know it's Betel guys. I want to say Betelgeuse just to make people mad. Hallelujah. But it's also called Betelgeuse. And it means the branch that is coming. The branch that is coming is a messianic name for King Jesus. Right? It, it's, it's, okay, so Jesus is coming back and he's going to tread out the wine press of his fury. Right? These are the three brightest stars. And this right here's name is Bellatrix. And Bellatrix means um, approaching quickly. So if you just learn the three brightest stars in Orion, which has a belt, a belt of truth. And by the way, if you were going to look up the names of the belt, if you're going to look up the names of these stars, and if you're going to read it from right to left like the Hebrews do, friends, you just need to know that everybody east of Jerusalem reads words from right to left. Everybody west of Jerusalem reads words from left to right because all the word points us back to Jerusalem where Jesus is coming back to. Amen. So if you're going to do this like they do over there, and like, okay, well, let's just look at this. This one right here, this one right here means wounded. This one right here means bruised. And this one right here, yeah, can anybody guess what the next one is? It means, it means healed. Okay, does anybody know a scripture that that's in? Come on, somebody say it, a double dog dare you. That's it. It is Isaiah. And it says, he was, bruised, he, was, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He had the, our chastisement of peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. Well, before that was in the Bible, it was in Orion's belt. Like, why? Because the author is the same. And what is the belt? The truth. Orion means light or shining light. Arise and shine, for your light has come. Amen. It's Isaiah chapter 60. Amen. And it, I, I promise you, if we, just, if we just pulled all this up, and if we just looked at the stars of all of this, and Orion's belt is right here, and oh my God. So, I mean, Orion's sword. Oh, 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 I just start freaking out. And at that time, man, when I, I have a ranch, I have a 720 acre ranch out in West Texas. And whenever I'm out there, man, there's, there's stars. I'm talking about some stars, y'all. I'm talking about sometimes, y'all, the stars are like, and I'm in Africa a whole lot. And literally, when I'm in the Robinsory Mountains, we're building a house in the Robinsory Mountains right now where one of our rescue centers are. And because we're there so much, uh, when I'm there, there's so many stars, it's hard to find constellations. It's like, dang. <laughs> like, I don't even know about any of this. Like, this is crazy. It's cray cray. Like, I can't believe how many stars there are here. So if we were just to go through your favorite constellations, and if we were going to go through, through the names of the stars and then the numbers associated with them. Now, here's the numbers that are associated with them. You have the number of degree of the brightness within the constellation, but you also have the number of degree of the brightness of all the stars in heaven. So 1 through 50, it begins with Sirius the dog star. That's the brightest star within the heavens. And by the way, Sirius the dog star is where you get the word sir from. It's where you get the word sire, and it's also where you get the term the big dog. It's the brightest star in the heavens. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Hmm. That's why you don't want to ever miss me preach, because you can miss incredible information like that. But, but I want to tell you, that kind of stuff has been useful to me in a, in a whole bunch of different ways. One time I was in Uganda, and we were going, I was preaching the gospel, and this witch came out, put a curse on me in front of everybody, uh, in front of like, you know, 20 or 30,000 people, he put a curse on me. And I'm the wrong cat to do that to I am the wrong guy. Number one, if it wasn't for Jesus and everybody wasn't watching, I'd probably beat him up. Now, don't come to me and threaten me. But I'm a man of God, so I'm not allowed to tell y'all that. So, but I, I just think it's okay to be a masculine dude, even though the world wants to neuter dudes today, and I'm not going to let it happen to me. Amen. There are certain things I'm happy to be mad about. I'm like, oh, no, this is a good reason to get mad. The Bible doesn't say don't you get mad. It says, it says be angry and sin not. 
Amen. Like, I got testosterone. I don't even need a reason to be mad. Amen. Like, oh, good. So <laughs> we're there. We're, we're in Uganda. This guy comes up, puts a curse on me in front of everybody. A whole bunch of his wives had been getting saved. <laughs> he had thousands and thousands of wives. I'm not making this up. He called himself the fourth man, as in the addition to the Trinity. And I told him, I said, you ain't nothing but a, but a cosmic punk. And your father, the devil, is going to go to hell forever and ever and ever. And if you don't repent, you're going to go there with him. I am not afraid of you. I am not afraid of you. And he told me, he said, you're going to die. And I was like, mm, not today, pal. <laughs> so God is my witness. My wife and I, we went to our room that night, and there was a cobra in our room. I went, to make me a cup, I went to make me a cup of tea that night, and I opened up the deal, and there was a cobra that was in there. There's a big, long story with it, but I got a great, I just want to cut to the chase. I lived. <laughs> and we had to call the fire brigade. <laughs> Because you're not allowed to carry pistols over there, which is ridiculous, and blast your own snakes. So you got to call the fire department, and it's like calling, you know, the Three Stooges to come out because they're all horrified of snakes. And I'm like, just give me that shovel, and I'll kill this thing. Let's go, man. Y'all not ever killed a snake before? And they were like stepping and fetching and running around like crazy people and knocking all of our furniture over. And like, God, man, y'all, come on, man. So we got this done. The guy came back. And he said this to me. They said, hey, man, this, the fourth man wants to talk with you. I said, well, what is it? And he said, when he went into the council of hell, this is what this man told me. When he went into the demonic council of hell, they told him, he said, this guy is preaching, and this guy, there's thousands and thousands of people here, and he's saying he's going to build all these orphanages and save kids, and yada, yada, yada. And he's tired of all the local witches murdering children here, and he's sick of this knucklehead Coney, and he knows a guy called the machine gun preacher. Amen. And this guy's crazy. This guy's crazier than a machine gun preacher. What do we do? And they said, just, just go and you, you got to go to him face to face and you got to pronounce he's going to die in front of everybody and then we'll take care of it. So after you didn't die, he tells me, I went back to the council of hell. And he said, they were all sitting on their chairs and they said, well, what happened? And he said, well, I, I went to him and I told him, you know, that he was going to die. And then there was a snake in his eye. And they said, yeah, this council of demons told him, yeah, uh, we're the ones who sent the snake. He said, well, he rebuked it in the name of Jesus. And when he said Jesus, they all fell off their chairs. And they threatened him and told him, you say that name down here again in this unholy chamber and in this unholy council. If you say it again, we're, we'll kill you. And he said, well, I... I, I I did, I'm just telling you what he said. And they're like, don't say it. He said, we don't talk about the dog in heaven. Wow. And when he told me that, I knew that they, I knew that those demons knew that he would interpret, interpret that as a blasphemous phrase. But I know the dog in heaven. And the dog in heaven is the bright and morning star. It's the brightest star in the heavens. It's serious. The dog star. Wow. Wow. That, I give you my word as a man of God that that is a true story. So cool. It's like, probably nobody else would know that, but I'm a nerd and I know that. <laughs> Amen. And I'm a snake killing dude too, I promise you. It's a lot of fun to go to another country and, and teach local professionals how to kill a snake in their own region. Like, you guys get out of the way. You got to go to war. Let's go. And so we did it. And I learned that, and I already knew that. And I told Leanne, I said, man, they, they called Jesus the dog in heaven. And I know what that is. And Leanna's like, it's the dog star. I said, yeah, it's the bright and morning star. That is his name. I was like, wow. I used to play in a Christian rock band called Dyslexic Dog, by the way. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys some scripture. Genesis 1.14, then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So the 14th verse of the Bible gives us the reason why on the fourth day when God created the material universe that God Almighty said, hey, I want you to know why I am creating the material universe. I'm creating them right now and I'm placing them in your field of vision. Everybody say Signs. Seasons, days, and years. It was not for light. The first reason was for signs. 
And here's what I want to tell you. God Almighty shows signs in the heavens. He has from the very beginning. And when God Almighty set up the cosmic prophetic clock, he did it right in front of the devil and everybody else and said, I'm going to run this thing and there's nothing that you can do about it. There's always been signs in the heavens when there's major events of how heaven is invading earth. And I mean, the easiest example of that is the star of Bethlehem. And like, well, what, how did the wise men know to come there? Well, they came from the east. And if you just take, a, if you take your finger, you go Jerusalem, and you go east, boom, you're going to hit Babylon. It's like, okay, well, what happened in Babylon? 400 years before all this happened, there was a dude by the name of Daniel who was put in charge of all of the astrologers and the wise men. And he taught those cats how to look for Jesus in the heavens. And 400 years after his death, they were still looking for the Messiah because Daniel taught them that. And they showed up in a day when everybody else didn't know. And you know why? Because they didn't respect the signs in the heavens. Amen. That is your Bible. Go and look up the book of Daniel and see what Daniel was put in charge of. Daniel was put in charge of the wise men. And then wise men came from the east at the birth of Jesus because Daniel had taught them to look in the heavens for it. And when they saw it, they said, it's time. Let's go. Let's go. Amen. Now, I know that the devil has done a lot of cool things, a lot of horrible things with this that people think are cool. And I'm sorry for that. Those things are forbidden. Those things are forbidden. I'm not looking to some witch to speak a word into my life that is ridiculous to accuse me of that. Do not accuse me of that because I, I'm telling you, you're going to hear from me if you do it. I'm going, to, I'm going to get right back in your grill and tell them you need to have a spirit of discernment about you. That is ridiculous that you think that I'm in league with the devil for glorifying Jesus and I'm not afraid of people. Amen. So it's like, okay, so here's like, well, Pastor Troy, have you not recognized though that, you know, witches and warlocks and, you know, the Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Medes, the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, they all, they all mess all this, all this stuff up. So we can't be a part of that. You don't say that about sex. You guys open up your Bibles to Psalms 19. Amen. Right on. No, you know what? It's weak and cowardly faith. It's the same reason why people do not believe that Jesus is coming back soon is because they have either a lazy faith or a cowardly faith. And it's like, don't be like that. Lazy faith will cause you to miss the things of the Lord. You don't want to have a lazy kind of faith. You don't want to have a lazy kind of theology. Man, you want to go after it. Like, well, what if I get something wrong? You will. And God will think it's hilarious. I know, no, you can't get anything in theology wrong. <laughs> okay, dude, probably 99.9% .9 of all of your theology is wrong right now. But it's the paradigm that you understand Jesus, and so you are loyal to it, so God Almighty blesses it. But don't think for one second that your theology is not going to change as you continue to grow with King Jesus. There's stuff that you do not believe that you will believe, and there's stuff that you're making a big deal of right now that you will not make a big deal out of in the future because you are in a relational process with the Lord. And so don't be bringing your 50-pound head before the Lord and say, well, you can't interfere with what's going on in here because he is happy to throw a wrench into your thinking and just mess everything up. As soon as you think that a denomination, that there ain't no godly people within a certain denomination, the most godly person you've ever met in your life will come right straight out of that denomination. As soon as you think that there ain't nothing good can come out of uh, a whole nation, I'm telling you, somebody that knows Jesus in a way like you've never known Jesus will come out of that. Somebody who does signs and miracles and wonders. And so I, I know from experience what I'm talking about. And like, man, Wow. No, I'm just, okay, Lord, you've done it again. You've just completely broken my entire paradigm, and you busted the whole thing. And, Lord, I'm still with you. And, Jesus, I'm ready for whatever this new journey is. So Psalms 19 is where we're at. And this is like the big mamba jamba when it comes to understanding how the heavens work. Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day it utters speech, and night unto night it shows knowledge. I'm going to stop and just say, you guys recognize that God talks different in the daytime than he does at nighttime? In the daytime, God talks to you about you and your life. In the nighttime, he reveals himself. So God Almighty designed our planet with an electromagnetic field and with an atmosphere in it that works like this. When the sun shines on this electromagnetic field and on our, on, on our atmosphere, boo, it's blue. That's the daytime. But at nighttime, 
When we get over on the shadow side of the earth, it's transparent and you can see. So what is that all about? Your daytime, God Almighty wants to talk to you and interact with you throughout your day. But nighttime, he wants you to get still and quiet and intimate with him. And that's why the stars are the way that they are. That's why there's a romance that goes with the stars. God Almighty intended that. Brother Hunter, I'd like, to, I'd like for you, if you would, would you show everybody our galaxy and show everybody where we are in the midst of our galaxy? <laughs> way to go, man. Okay. So our Milky Way, our, our Milky Way galaxy is, is kind of like a hurricane, right? And I'd like to preach on that. There's a huge study that goes with that on things that are in the shape of a hurricane or a galaxy. It's a crazy cool thing. It's, it's, it's like the, the fingerprint, which is also like a swirl and a galaxy of God. Okay, so it all has to do with the signature of the creator, this, this thing, right? And even if you look at your own DNA from the double helix and look at it from the top, it's doing this, right? So that's like the signature of God. Well, we have in the middle of our Milky Way galaxy, what's amazing is there are all of these spire, there are all of these really cool branches, right? Like this thing right here. But what's amazing is God Almighty placed our solar system in between one of those branches. If we were inside of one of those branches, we would not be able to see outside of our own galaxy. But we can. And we can see billions and billions and billions of other galaxies. But simply because the Lord, it was important for God Almighty to place us in a place where we could see way out and not just right in front of our face. Because daytime is for right in front of your face. Nighttime is for way, way, way out there. Daytime is about the things you can count. Nighttime is about the things that you cannot. Daytime is about the things that, that you have to do, and you honor God through the things that you have to do. Nighttime is about wonder and awe. And God Almighty has designed things to be like that, 12 hours in a day, 12 hours in a night. That prophetic number, the number 12, which means perfect government. And consequently, that is also why there are 12 major constellations that make up what the Hebrew calls the Maseroth, or what the Greeks call the Zodiac. Now, I'm going, to read, I'm going to continue to read this to you because this is going to lead us into why God would do such a thing. Are you all still here? I'm not going to preach all night, I promise. I'm, I'm just going to show you something really cool. I'm going to speed this up too. So here we go. I promise you we're not going to be here all night long. I promise. So it says this in verse 4, okay, of the same exact Psalms 19. It says, their line has gone out through all the earth. Remember, their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. Their line has gone out into all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. So what is the line? The line is called the ecliptic, and it is the apparent path the sun takes through the heavens. It's, of course, we know that the sun doesn't move, but how, how it appears to us in our firmament is that it moves across the line. Now, it doesn't touch 88 constellations. It doesn't touch 60. It doesn't touch 40. It only touches 12. There's only 12 constellations that the sun goes through, and that is called the Maseroth, and it's known as a tabernacle. Now, this is what the Bible says in the midst of that. It says, and in them he has set a tabernacle for the sun. Now, remember, he's talking about the line, right? And that is the ecliptic, which is the path that the sun goes through, and then it says it's a tabernacle for the sun that is in this thing that you and I would know as a zodiac. And then it says, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoicing like a strong man ready to run his race. It's rising is from one end of heaven and it's circuit to the other end. And there is no hit. There is nothing that is hidden from its heat. The word heat there is not just hot because it's the sun. The word heat there is passion. And it's like, what does that mean? And it says this. Okay. God Almighty reveals this incredible thing in the heavens. And here's one of the things that he loves to reveal. He's so passionate about this plan of redemption. And you can follow the line of the sun. And it goes all the way through in a circuit. And it declares it's a whole lot like a dude waking up and going, Today's the day I'm going to get married. Boom! And it's worth the wait. I told y'all this was going to happen. I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you. Man, I've finally done it. I'm doing it. This is going to happen. Woo! Today is my wedding day. It's like, what does that have to do with anything? It's God's story of redemption in the heavens. And the sun passes through it. And God says, I promise you, I'm going to get this done. And it's going to be worth the wait. All right? So 
Here are the 12 pictures of the zodiac, and you can see these things that are up there. Now, one of the things that's interesting that goes with all of this, which is crazy cool to me, is the order of this. Now, whenever we just took this off the internet and we added this in there, this is the order that most people that look at the, at the zodiac um, look at. And they say that it actually begins with Aries and it ends with Pisces. And I'm just going to tell you this right now. It does not. And this is why you should never, ever, 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 ever follow the advice or the counsel of a witch. Because they don't know the timing of things. You know why they don't know where the beginning and the ending is? Because they don't know the beginning and the end. This is all about King Jesus. It's not about your own personal power trip. That's not what it's about. For when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but they became vain in their imaginations and professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, right? And then goes off and they turned the glorious things of the Lord into four-footed beasts, yada, yada, yada. It's talking about all this, okay? I can tell you that this thing glorifies God. The Bible says that whenever Jesus Christ was born and as, as the wise men were following the star, that God Almighty sent, sent angels and the angel of the Lord showed up and spoke to the shepherds. And then it says, and the hosts of heaven surrounded them. You know what the hosts of heavens are? That. These angels showed up and they looked like stars. Angels are called stars all the way through the Bible, even in the book of Revelation. Angels and stars are like, they, you can switch the word back, back and forth, right? It's like, wh whoa, what is that all about? It is this, these stars, these stars represent a message and it's up to these angels to deliver the message. They're there for the performance of the word of God. Amen. Are y'all with me on that? But the message is in the heavens. The heavens declare the glory of God. So I'm just telling you this. Um, if you want to walk in a curse, just walk out of timing. And it's like, what are you talking about? Uh, when a 40-year-old woman acts like she's 16. When a 50-year-old man will not work for a living and stays at home saying, I'm too depressed to work and I can't hold down a job. All I can do is just play video games all day long. Curse! Get up. Get up. Somebody just needs to slap you around and say, you got a wife and you got children. Get up and get a job and pull your big boy pants up and tough it out. Like, well, you can't talk to men like that anymore. They're just too fragile. Mm. I'm sorry, guys. I don't mean to sound like, I don't mean to be ugly at all. I'm just saying this utter ridiculousness. Man, Jesus is coming back soon, man. I promise he is. So the Bible defines in Deuteronomy chapter 28 that if you walk in a curse in the morning, you'll say, I wish it was evening. And in the evening, you'll say, I wish it was morning. It means that you're out of sync of your timing. If you follow the advice of a witch or a new ager, you will be out of sync and you will be cursed. I promise you, because they don't know where it begins and they don't know where it ends. I know where it begins and I know where it ends. And I'm fixing to show it to you. I know exactly where it begins. I know exactly where it ends. And, but why? Because it's exactly as the Bible. And I'm, I promise you, I'm fixing to show you that. But know this. If you follow the Zodiac, and if you follow that, you're going to be given a word that is out of season. And let me tell you how it's going to manifest when you follow a word that is out of season, right? When you ought to be in love with your wife, you won't be. This is how, this is how it will manifest. When you ought to be happy, you'll be sad. And when you ought to be sad, you'll be happy. When your kids are in the house, you're going to wish they were out. And when they're out, you're going to wish they were back in. And it goes on and on and on and on and on because you follow the counsel of somebody other than the Holy Ghost. It makes you out of sync of everything, and it brings a great curse upon your life. So I'm going to warn you one more time. Do not be a part of that. Now, this thing is a circle. And guys, do you remember I showed you Polaris in the will? This is the will within the will. It's the will within the will. The zodiac within the heavens is the will within the will that, that Ezekiel was talking about. And there are four cardinal points that are up on this. One is a lion on these constellations. One, it's broken up into four different parts of threes. One is a lion. One is a man called Aquarius. Another one is a bull. And another one is an eagle. When Ezekiel stood at the throne of God and he saw the cherubim that had those four faces I just now told you, he also saw the will within the will. He's looking at this. Because this is the plan of Jesus. Amen. Okay. So I'm going to show you 
I'm going to show you where it begins and where it ends. But let me tell you how I know where it begins and where it ends. Because, see, in the midst of all these things, it's like, okay, if we're going to look right here. So if we have, wow, let me see where to start here. So Leo the Lion is right there in the center of that, man, and that's really cool. And then past that, I, I'm about to just start going through all that. I'm about to start busting through all these and that madness. I'm, I'm going to make you all crazy. I'm just going to just tell you that there's 12 of them. And for the sake of time, I'm going to tell you that we have to know where the story begins and where the story ends in order for us to know what the story is. And it's like, well, did the ancients know this? They did know this. And like, how do you know that they know this? And like, okay, can I show you a picture of the Sphinx? So here's the Sphinx. This is a Sphinx. And the Sphinx guards the largest, the largest astrological structure in the world. It's a lot like the Tower of Babel. Its top is as the heavens. It's astrological. Amen. Are y'all with me on that? Okay. So the Sphinx, and I've been, I've, I've stomped all over Egypt. I've been all over Egypt, thrown up there a bunch of times. I don't know how anybody can go there and not get sick. I've been sick every time I've ever been to Egypt. Just like, dang, come on, I'm sick the whole time I'm here. So uh, I caused an international incident. I did not know it was against the law to try and climb the pyramid. <laughs> I was a young man from Texas, and I did <laughs> I never imagined. I just thought everybody was too afraid to climb it. And so I started climbing up, man, and it's a wonder they didn't shoot me. Amen, because you're not allowed to climb it, which I didn't know that. I've since learned. <laughs> but the Sphinx is guarding the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid is 40 stories tall. Do y'all know that? What's the tallest building in Charlotte? How many, how many stories is it? How many? Do y'all think it's like 40 stories? It's 54? So imagine that the pyramid is just a little bit, it's 14 stories smaller than that. It's pretty crazy. I mean, it's huge, y'all. It's huge. So we have this thing sitting out here in the front. Do you know what the name Sphinx means? It means to bind together. So it tells you where it begins and where it ends, the story in the heavens. It's the Sphinx. The word Sphinx means to bind together. And you know what it is? It is the head of a woman and the body of a lion. It begins at Virgo and it ends at Leo. That's what it's saying. It is a Sphinx that means to bind together. It's the key that tells you where it begins and where it ends. And it begins at Virgo. What is Virgo? It's Genesis 3.15, the promise of the seed of the woman, the first of the 400 messianic promises of the seed of the woman and the first prophecy of the virgin birth of King Jesus. And it ends with the lion of the tribe of Judah coming back to rule and reign forever and ever and ever. It begins at Genesis and it ends at Revelation. And the reason why it's like that in the heavens and the reason why it's like that in your Bible is because the author is the same. Okay. All right, so let's go through these super fast. Whenever you, see, whenever you see Virgo, I'm going to show you guys Virgo. And I'm skipping a whole bunch of things, guys, and I'm sorry. I, I, I suppose that you guys can see where I'm at now. I'm going to go down to, and we're going to look at Virgo. Good job. Okay, so Virgo the Virgin is, tells us that there's a Messiah that is coming. And spica, which is actually in the midst of her belly button, that's another word for branch. That's why she's always holding a branch. One of the great prophetic names, uh, messianic names for Jesus, which is also found in the, in the book of Zechariah several times, is behold the coming of the branch or behold I send my servant the branch. Right? You guys heard that before? So here's what's amazing is um, Virgo in the heavens is a virgin. That's why she's called Virgo. And she has a seed within her. That's impossible. That doesn't happen. That's impossible. I'm not going to give you guys a biology lesson, but I'm, <laughs> trust me. It's impossible for, for a virgin to have a seed within her, right? Yet from the very beginning, God Almighty placed something in the heavens that said, this is going to happen. In other words, this is going to be God invading humanity, right? Now, the names of all those stars, see, the firmament shows his handiwork. If you look up the names of all those stars, it tells all this story. And it's stupid cool. All right, the next one is Libra. Boom. There's Brother Libra. You guys know the skills, right? So the first one said there's a Messiah. He's going to be coming. He's going to be holy. He's going to be 100% God. He's going to be 100% man. And this says, and he's going to be a redeemer. 
He's going he's gonna to pay for the price of a slave. That's what redemption means. I'm a redemption freak. Amen. I love redemption. Love it. I mean, I, I'm telling you, I just, I lose my mind over any kind of redemption. And so not only is he going to be a Messiah, but he's going to bring redemption and he is a redeemer and the redemption is him. And if you get to looking up the names of all those stars, it'll tell you all about it. And you can look them up. You can look them up. I promise. You know what's up after that? Scorpio. Scorpio says he's going to take on death and hell. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where's your victory? Right? And Scorpio says, and remember, remember the story so far, he's, he's going to be a human. He's 100% God. He's going to be born of a virgin. He's going to redeem. He's going to set the scales right. He hates, uh, it's an abomination for him, for him to see unjust scales. He hates that. He's going to be a Messiah redeemer. Now, you know what? He's going to take on hell, and here's the deal. He's going to die. If you look up the names of all those stars, it'll tell you that story. Then after that, it's Sagittarius. But I got good news. He's going to rise again. And he's going to show up on a horse. And he's, a, he's something else, y'all. I'm telling y'all right now, man, he is something else. He will resurrect and he will conquer death. That's what Sagittarius says. Then after that is a strange one, Capricorn. Like, what is this? It is a picture, and the Greeks have a lot of problems with this, where they will see that there's a, a duality of something in, in God. And so what they'll do is they'll try and make a hybrid between animals and, and people, right? So here's what they got. You got this thing. They got this seagull. Well, there's no such thing as a seagull, right? But let me tell you what this, what this picture is. It's a picture of a sacrificial animal laying down his life. His legs are folded up, and out of him, a new living fish is coming out of it. What is this? Now, guys, remember, remember the, what, what we've learned of the plan of the Redeemer so far is this. He's going to be a Messiah. He's going to be a virgin birth. There's going to be, he's going to be a redeemer. He's going to set slaves free. He's going to take on death and he's going to die. He's going to resurrect. And then you need to know that out of him laying down his body, a new body will arise. And we're going to call him fish. Are you, you guys know the history of the church? You guys know that we're all called fish, right? Okay. Now, what is the next one? Man, I love this one. Boom. That's Aquarius. And like, what's the big deal of that? He's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. All right, so what is the story of the Zodiac so far? And remember, the heavens declare the glory of God. And what is this thing that if you follow the line of the sun through the heavens, God Almighty says, man, listen, my wedding day, my, my wedding day is coming. It's going to happen, and it's going to be worth the wait. It's, it's our redemption is what this story is. Going to be a Messiah, going to be a Redeemer. He is going to die. He is going to resurrect out of his body and out of his sacrifice is going to come a whole new living people. And I will pour out my spirit upon all of them. What's the next one? Boom. I'm going to put in covenant with them. This bond of covenant between Israel and the church, between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And I will give them my word. What's the next one? Boom. It's Aries. It's his kingdom will come, his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If you look up the names of all those stars, it'll tell you all that. Now, the next one is Taurus the bull. And what is that? It's the unstoppable momentum of the promise of the return of King Jesus. He's going to break through and he's going to come back. The brightest star that is, in, um, that is in Taurus is his left eye. It's called Aldebaran. And when he comes back, every eye shall see him. And it's going to be cool. You know what the next one is? Gemini. And when we see him, we will be like him. And his righteousness will be our righteousness. And his holiness will be our holiness. And his victory will be our victory. And then what's the next one? Boom. Catch the crab. As the beloved possession of the Lord, he will hold us in his hand and none shall pluck us out. And then what's after that? Leo, the lion of the tribe of Judah, will come back and rule and reign in all of his majesty. And we and you and I will rule and reign with him. In a very small nutshell, that's just going through the Zodiac at a very primitive level. And I'm telling you, it does glorify Jesus. It's time for me to close. And I'm, I, don't, I told you guys I went on preacher all night. 
It's time for me to close. I have so much more to tell you guys, but I do, I do have to finish on this and tell you this. This is going on every single night. It's always gone on every single night, and it ramps up as we ramp up to Revelation. And it happens more and more and more and more and more. Jesus said there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. Do you guys remember that? And whenever Jesus is, is talking about signs through the sun and through the moon and through the stars, it's kind of like, well, okay, I'm going to give my prophetic word through Twitter and through Facebook and through YouTube. It's, it's literally like that. Because when God is speaking through the sun, he is always speaking a prophetic word to the nations. When God is speaking through the moon, he is always speaking a word to his covenant people, either Israel or Jesus, or the body of Jesus. And when God Almighty is speaking through um, the stars, he's talking to his children of inheritance. Abraham, let's talk about your inheritance. Come out here, boy. I want to show you the stars. Right? The sons of God are called the stars of God. We go, go through all of this. And sons of God is a term that means I get the inheritance. That's what that means. So it's like, okay, what is this? Well, in the last days, there'll be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars, and there'll be a convergence of all of that at once. One of the, I know that, again, whenever God is speaking um, through the sun, like through a solar eclipse, that is a national word. That is a national word. When God is speaking a word to the moon, um, what's interesting is the sun is always seen as masculine and the moon is always seen as feminine. The moon has a 28-day cycle just like a woman does. 28. And 28 is a number that represents times and seasons all the way through the word of God. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it lists 28 times and seasons. Right? And the first one is, um, gosh, what is the first one of those? So everything there is a time and a season in heaven. The first one is what? A time to be born? Isn't it a time to be born? Yeah. And it's, time, it's, it's, it's time to be born. And then the last one is, a, is the time of peace. That's the last one is not a time to die. The last one is a time of peace. The Bible says in Psalms 37, 37, mark the perfect and the upright man for his end shall be peace. The last of the 28 seasons, and seasons are always cyclical, and timelines have the dynamics of something that's linear, right? So we need to know the difference between times and seasons, because seasons are meant to be predicted. And times are always centered around some epic event. There was the time Leanna got pregnant. Then there was a time she had twins. Oh, God. <laughs> and then there was a time that we raised four children, little bitty kids, all at the same time. And then there was a time we began to take on other teenage girls come to live with us in our house during that time. And I was talking about, then there was a time they all grew up and they all got out of the house. You know, all four of my kids got married the same year. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. <laughs> I'm very close to my kids. I have one of my kids and, and my grandkids live directly next door. They bought a ranch right next to mine. And they live directly next door to me. Every single day, my grandkids are at my house. And all four of my kids work for me in some way or another. And they, go, they travel the world. And we're all very tight. But I want to tell you, there was not wailing and gnashing of teeth when they all moved out. I was like, oh, happy day. <laughs> and for Leanna, not so much. Leanna went into what happened to my world. Like, I can't believe this. I was like, well, I guess I'll be your world now. <laughs> She's like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> so I'm telling you these things to tell you that there is some significant events that's going to be happening immediately in the heavens. There's one that's going on right now that there's a, there, a planetary alignment. And when things get in alignment, when the heavens get into alignment, God Almighty is saying, you get into alignment. And it's a whole thing. You know, this last year, uh, there was the great planetary parade that hasn't happened in thousands of years. And what I mean by the planetary parade is that it was, lighter, it was like literally in sequence. So there's seven things that you can see with your naked eye. You can see the sun. You can see the moon. You can see Venus. You can see Mercury. Uh, you can see Mars. You can see Jupiter. And you can see Saturn. And all seven of our days of our week are named after those seven celestial beings, those seven celestial things that you can see. Right? Y'all knew that, right? Okay, so... It's like, okay, you know, Monday, moon day, right? We can go on. So I, I feel like y'all don't believe me for some reason. It's true. <laughs> Tell you right now, it's true, I promise. All right, come on. So, so um, but what happened last year um, was 
amazing because it hadn't happened in thousands of years. It won't happen again for thousands of years. And it worked like this. When you went outside and looked, as the sun was coming up, what was directly above the sun was Mercury. And then what was directly above that was Venus. And then what was directly above that was the moon. And then what was directly above that was Mars. And what was directly above that was Jupiter. And what was directly above that was Saturn. It was called a planetary parade. And it was like, dude. And listen, I freak out over stuff like that. Now, when I, when I get out of the car at night, I'm like, hey, you know, my kids, my grandkids, I'm like, hey, look right there, man. Check that out. That's Taurus the Bull. And look right there, man. That's Pleiades. And Pleiades is called the Seven Sisters. It represents the seven churches. And, and then I hear the slamming of the door as everybody snuck off to the house. <laughs> like, here he goes. Here he goes. Just, shh, shh, just go, go. I'll show you something crazy about Pleiades. And guys, can I show you the seven churches in uh, Asia? You want to see this? So here's the seven churches in Asia. This is a, a photo of just the seven churches of Asia. And you got Pergamon, you got Thyatira, so you got Sardis, you got Smyrna, you got Philadelphia, you got Ephesus, and you got Laodicea. And what's crazy cool is, you know, Jesus says, hey, who are, these, who are these stars in my hand? What are these? He goes, well, these are the seven angels of the seven churches. And I want to highlight these seven, and I'm going to give a word to all the universal body of King Jesus, no matter time, distance, geography, race, denomination. Uh, I got a word for the church, and this is it. And he based it off these seven different, these seven different churches. Well, these are towns in Turkey, in modern Turkey. I've been to all these places. Uh, Ephesus is my favorite out of all of them. I love Ephesus. Love going to Ephesus. Blows my mind going to Ephesus. And in the midst of all that, like, why? Okay, well, what is the deal? Well, there's, there's one tiny constellation that is in the neck of Taurus the bull that's called Pleiades. And Pleiades is in the neck of Taurus the bull, and it's the, called the Seven Sisters. And it literally is the seven churches. And it, 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 it's, it's amazing because it's in the neck. Whenever Jesus comes back, the church is coming back with him. So yoked to Jesus coming back is us. Pleiades. Amen. I want to, can I, do we have just a picture of just Pleiades? So here's a picture of Pleiades. Now let's put it over the map of the seven churches. Oh. Now, here's something that's crazy. I'm just going to tell you this. This is crazy. When I first discovered this, and this is not a big, this, I don't want to say it's not a big deal. This is not unique to this. Because all over the world, cities line up with stars. And something I've done a huge study on. But when Jesus talks to the seven churches, Jesus picks one that looks like the Pleiades. Now, there's one that's off. This one here is off. This one right here is off, and that's a whole other story. And there's one here, this one here is this one here is off. And this one right here is missing. Ephesus is missing. It was there until about, six, until about 600 years ago. Because 600 years ago, it's supernova And in the daytime, it was, it was as bright as the sun. You could literally see the star in the daytime. Everybody knows about it. It's been chronicled all over the planet Earth. And that star, supernova it got brighter, 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 brighter. And it went, boom, it's out. It's just like when the first time Moses saw the face of God. He's just supernova right? Like, are you ready? Get ready. Boom. He's gone. No, nobody's seen him since. So that actually happened. And do you remember what Jesus said to the church of Ephesus? Does anybody know? Because there's 17 promises for him that overcomes in the Bible. In, in the book of Revelation, or seven, the number 17 is a number that means overcoming victory. And so consequently, in, in the book of Revelation, there are 17 promises for him that overcomes. He tells Ephesus, he tells Ephesus, if you don't return to your first love, I will remove my candlestick. And that is the one star, and it was directly over Ephesus, the one star that lost its light. What the word that Jesus spoke to the church actually manifested in the heavens. The heavens declare the glory of God. Amen. And the firmament shows his handiwork. This year, on October the 14th, there's going to be a solar eclipse that is going to come in through, guard, is going to come in through Gardner, Oregon. And it's going to come right across Texas. 
and it's going to exit Corpus Christi, and it's on October the 14th, and it is a four-hour and uh, something event, and I, I like, okay, so what? Well, number one, it comes into a place called the garden, and it, exit, it exits a place called the body of Christ, Corpus Christi. And that's exactly where that shadow goes. And it has to do with them that are overshadowed by the Lord, so it's a word. Now, we know that whenever the, the, the last great American eclipse happened, you guys remember that, right? In 2017, the great American eclipse happened. Like, oh, well, wasn't that great? I mean, we've seen lots of eclipses. Not like that one. Not that came into Salem, Oregon, and then left, and it was exactly, an, uh, uh, it, was the, the, it was exactly 70 miles wide, and it left here, Charlotte. This is where it left. I mean, we're literally right here where it left. It came, this is where it exited. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, the Lord has overshadowed you, destined you for great things. I can, I can tell you that it began, like, well, that, it's, it's not unusual to have an eclipse. It is like that. The last time that we had a, an eclipse that only touched America and did not touch any other nation was 1776. That's true. It was the year that our nation was born. And here's what's weird. That one happened in 2017. The next one is going to happen next year. The next great American eclipse is going to happen next year. And it ends a seven-year cycle. Like, okay, the next one is going to come up. Man, do you have, let's see, what do you have back there, Hunter, as far as just... Okay, so yep, so this is the one that's about to take place on October the 14th of this year. And I want to tell you, this is Corpus Christi, Texas. This is Uvalde, Texas. We do a big work in Uvalde. And right here is a place called Kerrville. And it is a place where I'm on, I'm on a board of a giant ministry that's called the, the Coming King Sculpture Garden. And there's this crazy dude by the name of Mac, by the name of Max Griner, and he has a cross there called the Empty Cross, and he's 77 feet seven inches high, and he's got all these statues all over the place, and it represents different prophetic places. And you go there and you pray, and crazy things happen, right? Well, the coming of the King, yeah, that is the set, that's it right there, and they do baptisms there, and we take our church down there all the time. It's a prayer garden. People come from all over the world to pray there. Well, that shadow is coming right directly across the top of that thing. And this brother's going to be there going, Jesus! That's what I'll be doing. You can be all calm if you want to, man. I'm going to be losing my mind firing my pistol off. <laughs> okay. I want to show you. I want to show you where. So I told you the first one came down. And I want to, hey, man, do you have that video, that NASA video showing the exact? Boom. There it is. Okay. So it comes over here, man. It goes through Salem. And here's what's amazing. The first city that it hit when it came through the Great American Eclipse was Salem, Oregon. If you follow this all the way through to your town right here, it goes through seven cities called Salem. Seven cities called Salem. Okay? And the odds of that is, it, it, it's impossible. And there are seven cities. I got this from NASA. I, I got that off the NASA website. And there's seven cities called Salem. Okay, so look, can, can we look at the swath and the path of it? Can you show me that? Okay, so the one that's going to happen next, next year is going to come up this way, and it's going to cross right there. Now, I'm going to talk to you about that pinpoint here in just a second, but I want to tell you what April the 8th of 2024 is. That's when the next one's going to happen. It's Passover. It is Passover. The heavens declare the glory of God. Now, here's, here's the deal. I want you to remember how I started this thing off. Because what I see is seven Salems, which means seven years of peace. And I want to tell you, you cannot be afraid of the day that you're living in. Because God Almighty is declaring... God Almighty is declaring, I am with you, I'm 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 with you. Now look here. I want to tell you all something. Politically, I don't care what anybody thinks. I am right wing of Attila the Hun. That's me. But I want to tell you, Jesus is not coming back to make America great again. And it's like, well, he has to. That's exactly why everybody missed Jesus the first time. 
because they thought that he was there to make Israel great again. And when he didn't jump through their hoops, he said, I'm not ever going to trust the prophets again. I'm not ever going to go to church again. I'm just done. I'm done. And uh, looking at a bunch of American pansies because an election didn't go the way that you wanted it to go. Like, mm, no, no. Is it okay if I preach the truth? Are y'all all right with this? Listen, I do want America to be great again. I promise you, I do. I, I mean, listen, I love this nation. I promise you. I'm a Texan, which means I'm an American on steroids. That's what that means. But I want to just tell you this. Guys, hear me, hear me say this to you. That began a seven-year cycle, and that thing went through seven Salems. And then it ended at the place where the Civil War started. Maybe it doesn't mean anything. But I can tell you what I'm believing God for because where this comes together is actually a place called Little Egypt. And there was an Egyptian dude that had a dream of seven, of a cycle of seven, and another cycle of seven. But I, being the psycho that I am, I got with my teams and I said, I want to Google Earth this thing. And I want to know exactly to the square inch where these two things meet. And it ain't good enough. 70 miles ain't good enough. It's too big. I want it down to 10 feet. I want to know within 10 feet of where that thing. So we begin to look, and it, it's a state park. And there's a rest stop there, a place of rest. And then you begin to look, and inside this state park where it actually crosses, there's a road. And then we could see the road, and then we turned it over to the map side to see what the name of the road actually was. And I'm going to show you guys this. It's called Salem Road. It also looks like a pay, a Hebrew letter. It's just a whole other thing I'll go off into later. Come on. This is the decade of the pay. There is a peace that God has for his people that are his. And the heavens are declaring this over and over and over again. Um, there is a freak out that the world has not yet experienced where men's hearts will fail them for fear. Which side are you going to be on? I mean, why don't you just decide right now, man, I'm with Jesus and I ain't leaving Jesus and I got to have King Jesus. I got to be full of the Holy Ghost. And I want to tell you, man, uh, the, whatever happens in this world, whatever happens, however the world changes. You guys know we live in a completely different world now than we did before COVID. We live in a completely different world now than we did before 9-11. And yet it was still not the end. There's still a work to be done, right on. And you can't throw a fit and say, well, I just thought he was just going to do something political. I thought Jesus was going to show up and do something political. And he's going to run off all the, all the leftists in this nation. And we were finally going to be a free country again and all that kind of stuff. And he didn't jump through the hoops that I wanted him to. So he can't be the Messiah. That's exactly what Israel did. And you've been blaming them your entire life, and you saw every good friend of the church throw a wall-eyed fit and question if they should ever go to church again after the last election. And I'm like, oh, God, what a wicked and adulterous generation this is. Help me, Lord God. Help me, God. Because I just soon go to the ranch and feed my cows to mess with these people. So what are you going to do, man? You're going you're gonna to freak out or are you going to look up? Because as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. <laughs> and I don't know how I'm going to get everything. And this is, this is something I, I tell everybody all the time. I say, if you don't know how to trust things, I don't, like, I don't know how to trust in this situation. I don't know how to trust in that situation. You know who to trust. And just because you're in something that you've never seen before, doesn't mean that Jesus is still not in control. See, that has to do with the ways of God. Whenever he got up and he declared, and Thomas said, Lord, show me your ways. Man, we need to know your ways. He's like, Thomas, I have shown you, I've shown you my ways. I am the resurrection, the truth, and the life. I mean, I'm, I am, I, I'm, I'm all those things. I, I'm showing you the way. And the way it's not mapped out the way that it used to be. Times are changing. The Bible says that even the very heavens will be shaken. There's tremendous celestial events. And I'm seeing them, and I'm just like, whoa, my goodness, look at what God Almighty is declaring. And there's two things that happens on me. The passion for Jesus to come back quickly, and secondly, the fear of the Lord comes upon me. And we need a good, healthy fear of the Lord. Friends, I'm done. Let's give Jesus a great big praise. Awesome. I want to I invite 
Pastor Allen up here, and I want to I ask everybody to stand up. Man, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I didn't preach on anything I was planning on preaching tonight. Mm. But I got, I, got, I got to some good stuff. And again, we're just, hitting the top, we're just hitting the top of it. I'm not trying to sell you my wares, but I have a book back there on all this. And it's, it's called Looking Up. Right on. And you know what's really cool? Do you, do you know what's, and I promise you, look, I don't get any of this money. None of this money goes to me. All this money goes to Troy Brewer Ministries. And we, 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 we literally rescued kids out of this. So, but I can tell you what's cool. Dr. Jimmy Evans, who's a friend of mine, he just released his book today called Look Up. Look up yeah. And I was like, man, come on, Jimmy. Actually, I was like, no, folks will be looking him up. They're going to come across me is what's going to happen. I was like very happy. I was like jazzed. I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> that is outstanding. Guys, I, wanna just, I just want to just encourage you and tell you, man, as you begin to look off into this and as you begin to take this seriously and let the Lord reveal his secrets to you, he's going to take you into a different place. And he's going to show you how to have peace or the Salem the shalom of the Lord. He's going to show you that. He's going to show you there's a new anointing for peace and for hope and for resurrection power. Yes. Peace, hope, resurrection power. There's a new anointing for those things. There's a new anointing for supernatural sanity. This is why the demon of fentanyl has been released, has been, has been loose on our lands and crossed our borders. We put our borders down and we release that demon into the brains of people here. And why? Because there is a new anointing for supernatural sanity that you can, you can see things you've never seen before and go, wow, Lord, I see you there. And also, too, that God Almighty will give you simple solutions to complicated issues. And just like, man, this thing's so difficult. You're like, okay, it's really not that big of a deal. It's just a little tweak. That's all it is. Friends, I am, I'm going to come back tomorrow, but I want, I want to just release this on you. You guys ready? Father God, I pray, God, in the name of King Jesus for my friends, God, that are here tonight, God, that traveled and were faithful to gather tonight. And I pray, Lord God Almighty, sir, that you would speak incredible things and show us incredible things. God, you are faithful to accomplish that which you have began. You, will, you started it. God, you will finish it. God, you are not done. You are resurrected from the dead. We declare, God, that you ain't done yet. We declare that. And Father God, sir, we're not done yet. And the Spirit of the Lord is within us. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. We are indeed overshadowed by God Almighty himself. And God Almighty, sir, you have a great word for us this year from the heavens. Beginning at the gardener is speaking to his body this year. And we say, Father, in the name of King Jesus, speak to us. God, give us an ear to hear. Give us a heart to know you. Give us an eye to see, Lord. Jesus, we need you more now than we've ever needed you. Uh, God, we declare, we repent of our hopelessness. We repent of our lazy faith. We repent of our offense, Lord God. We repent, Jesus, we need you. Let there be revival here. God, I want to lift up this whole region, this whole area. That God Almighty, sir, this historic place, this place, Lord God Almighty, sir, this incredible place, King Jesus, God, that you've done so many great things and you're still doing so many great things. God, let there be a new outpouring. Let the churches be alive. Let there be a ready answer. Let there be hope. Let there be rescue. Let there be selfless acts of redemption, Lord God, that glorify you. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, let there be words and prophecies. Let there be dreams and let there be visions. Let there be reconciliation, Lord God Almighty. My God, I love you, Lord, and I praise you. God, let there be strong and ridiculous encounters, Lord God. Let there be unusual miracles. Jesus, Jesus, I love you so much, and I'm so grateful for you, Lord. I lift up my friends. I pray I speak a new love, a new hope right now in the name of Jesus, a new hope, a new resurrection power in the name of King Jesus, a new kind of sanity in the name of King Jesus, clarity in Jesus' name. I declare that over your lives. Such as I have, I give unto you, according to the word of God. Now, Father God, sir, release your angels for the performance of your word, and I believe it, sir, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.